Improvising cleaning equipment and materials. Do you know why we improvise items, Jim? Look here, ma'am. I don't even know what improvising means. Leave alone. Why it's done? Sorry. To improvise is to make something that you need but cannot afford to buy at that particular time. Usually, locally available materials are used to improvise cleaning items such as brooms, brushes, dustpans, mops, and cleaning abrasives. That is being creative, I guess. I think I know the materials we can use to make brooms. Go on. Um, we can use long grasses, reeds, as well as strings. That's right. Collect long grass and reeds. Tie them tightly using a string. Fold the part that serves as the handle and tie again to produce a neat edge. Trim the lower edges evenly and pop. You have a broom. You can do the same with green twigs. Mm. I guess you can use the same idea to make brushes, don't you think? Yep. Now, for cobweb brushes, collect coconut or sisal fiber, tie them tightly round a long stick, trim to make it neat, and for bottle brushes, use a small, smooth stick instead. Mm. And um, dustpans can be made from uh, old tin containers? Correct. As well as cardboard or old jerry can containers. To make cleaning clothes, wash and cut old bed sheets and clothes into needed sizes. Then hem the edges to make them last long. The same idea can apply in making floor clothes using old bed covers, blankets, and towels. Hmm. Sometimes you use ash to scrub the sulfurias. Is that improvising too? Of course we can make abrasives using ash, grounded charcoal, rough leaves, sisal fibers, or even maize cobs for cleaning utensils when you cannot afford super bright. Mm. Wow. If we could do this at home, then we can save a lot of money. And cut down on the cost of removing that. You know, there are a lot of reasons why we do cleaning, right? Do you even have to ask? Of course cleaning ensures a healthy environment since a dirty place can become breeding ground for disease causing insects such as flies, mosquitoes and rodents. Plus, cleaning makes our home comfortable to live in. Wow! Genius! We also clean to ensure surfaces retain their original color and appearance. In a way, we prolong the life of the house and articles in it. And as I said, regular cleaning ensures loose or fixed dirt does not accumulate on surfaces, which would make it expensive and time-consuming to remove. Mm, wait a second. Did you say loose or fixed dirt? That is what I said. That is classified as loose or fixed. Loose dirt, which is also called dust, consists of tiny and light particles of sand, ash, soot, dry leaves, and hair that settle on flat surfaces. If they are not removed, they accumulate, making the surfaces untidy. And uh, what about fixed dirt? Fixed dirt, on the other hand, forms when dust mixes with moisture or grease onto the surface. They can also result from rusting and stains on clothes. Mm. Removing fixed dirt is much more difficult than loose dirt, I guess. You got it. The two categories of dirt require different methods to remove. This we will discuss before supper. But do us one favor before you go. Demonstrate how you'd make a sweeping broom with resources at hand. Oh. Uh -huh. Assuming I'm using grass and reeds, which I have collected from the field, mm -hmm. I'll take a reasonable amount and tie tightly using a string. Mm -hmm. Then I will fold the top edges back and tie again for firmness. Then 
I trim the lower edges uniformly to produce my sweeping broom. Well, well, well. Now you go play soccer with your friends. All right. See you soon.